Welcome to 843 TV. I'm your host, Wayne Morris with WHHI TV. And I'm your host, Carrie Manning with the Village Spa. And today we have a special treat. It's an all spring Allen panel. And we are coming to you from one of the nicer homes you'll ever be in. <laughs> um, it's a home for sale here on Spring Island, and we're going to talk about that in the show later on. But our first guest is Miss Alice Reed. She is a resident here on Spring Island, and she's here just to give you a sense of community, talk a little bit about her transition here, her transition within the community, and what drew her here to Spring Island. Our second guest is Ed Swift. Ed is a former sports writer, and he is a part-time resident. He's going to talk to us about how that works, uh, being a part-time resident here on Spring Island, and all the great things that him and his family love to do when they're in town. And then last but not least, we have Mr. John Strothers. He's a broker in charge here on Spring Island Realty, and he's going to be showcasing this amazing house that we're standing in right now. And he's also going to showcase another home site, which is always another beautiful piece of property. So make sure that you stay tuned for more 843 TV. Where communities come to speak. Eight four three TV, where Bluffton comes to speak. Where Spring Island comes to speak. Where Hilton Head Island comes to speak. Where Port Royal comes to speak. Eight four three TV, where communities come to speak. Welcome to 843 TV. We're here today with Miss Alice Reed. She is a resident here on Spring Island. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you. So tell everybody, first of all, how, where'd you guys come from and what brought you all here to Spring Island? Well, we came from Maryland. We had a small horse farm up there and um, we had also had a place on Kiowa because we wanted a nice warm place in the wintertime to play golf. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for something with more of a community and more nature oriented. And we found Spring Island. We came here. That definitely covers those bases yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> well, I understand that uh, y'all put your farm in a conservation easement. Is that um, attachment to nature or respecting nature? Is that what kind of what brought y'all to Spring Island? Yes, we where we lived was suddenly having some development pressure. Some people were using that as a place to live and commute into Baltimore. And we, we were worried about what it was going to do to the countryside. Mm -hmm. So in the early 80s, we and some of our neighbors put our property in a conservation easement. Wow, that's, um, that's early. I mean, yes. not many people were doing it during that yes. time. It was, um, things so does were, that protect that forever? Forever, yes. Oh. So when we sold our property, the people that bought it can never develop it. it. We could have originally had four houses on the property, but now it will only be one house on that property forever and 22 acres. More people need to do that. Well, <laughs> so. Yeah, well, they are. Uh, Ace Basin, so many people are putting their it's, land in conservation it's, easements. It's wonderful. And just, and of course, Spring Island has done it as well with our conservation easements. Yeah, I think we have, what, 1,200, 1,200 yeah, so acres it's, there. And we get to enjoy it. Yeah. We use the trails and so mm -hmm. forth. And that was really, you know, we were talking before we filmed, I mean, um, where you moved from when you had your vacation home in Kiowa and you moved here. Just tell us kind of what are some of the differences between the two communities and what makes this place so special? Well, first of all, the community. Mm -hmm. uh, when we, we were living in a resort and you, the feeling of community wasn't really there for us. When we got here, we were just welcomed by other members and really felt like we were part of a community. Mm -hmm. And of course, the way that the nature has been preserved here meant a whole lot to us. Yeah, that's a big, big component here. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So when you did move down here, did you buy a home? Did you build? Did you come down in stages? We. We bought property in 2005, and my husband was still working at the time, and we decided, well, we'll take, take our time. But then we immediately built our guest cottage in our garage because we thought, well, we might as well enjoy it while we're here. And then my husband decided it was a good idea to retire and come here. So we built our main house three years later, and we moved here permanently then. Well, now that you are here permanently, um, how do you spend your days? How do you, how do you fill your time? Well, I, I play and I do some volunteer work. Playing, I, do, I run, I run, I play golf. I um, 
do some art stuff, I basket weaving, ceramics. I think that's all the fun stuff. Oh, <laughs> no, the most fun stuff I do is play bridge. Okay. That's one of my favorite pastimes mm. here. And then I volunteer in several different areas. One is um, bluebird monitoring. There are 270, I think, bluebird houses on Spring Island, and there are over 50 monitors. And we go around and we check the bluebird houses and see who's, had, who's laid eggs and check as they fledge and so forth. And it's really interesting. It's starting right now for this year. Um, we, we have all the houses, and first the chickadees come in and lay their eggs, and the bluebirds come in and lay their eggs. And we keep track of that and share that with the Cornell um, School of Ornithology. And I'm also one of the, we're called chicken tenders. <laughs> we have laying hens. We have 32 laying hens here. This is a new project on Spring Island, and we take care of them. We feed them and make sure they have water and clean up after them. And um, so this is a new project that we take turns. Each of us takes a week. Well, rumor has care it you have a pretty fancy little chicken coop. You kid. must come see the chicken <laughs> <laughs> We have several different varieties of chickens, and they're very, they're very friendly. They're so used to people that when you come to visit them, they come running over to greet you. It's, it's really quite fun. To, now, do you uh, have your horses here? I don't have horses here anymore. I do, I do some horseback riding, but I'm um, not going to have horses anymore. As they say, don't, don't um, have a hobby that you have to feed when you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I would agree with that. I'm always amazed every time we come here that there's like a new activity that's so unique that we hadn't heard of the time before. Do the residents, um, you know, start these clubs and these activities like the bluebird monitoring yes. or is that something Spring Island provides you with or how does that it's, originate? Usually the residents start pretty much everything. For instance, the bluebird monitoring started in the early 90s. Okay. So, and it's grown from just a few houses to almost 300. Wow. And over 50 volunteers work on it. It would take that many to cover them all. It does. <laughs> it, it does take a little time, but it's, it's really very interesting to see how they, how they do that. And it makes you really feel part of nature when you're visiting their houses and peeking inside and yeah. counting the eggs and so forth. And with the chickens, again, one of the residents got started and got the little chicks and raised them in her garage until we built their Taj Mahal. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a waterfall farm, which is a, like a garden, a vegetable garden. Wow. And um, I go once a week and weed, and we also pick. And most of that food goes to the kitchen and to the residents. And then we also open it up for our employees at the end of the season. Nice. So we share with them. That's so, great. Yeah. Well, not even living here, because we've been coming up here for several months now, and no longer than we spend here once a week, you know, we come in and there is just a, there's, there's a wonderful, warm feeling that everybody in here is so happy and so nice, and it's like you're all one big happy family. <laughs> well, one of the things that the developers did when they first built Spring Island was they put our mail, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a mail room. So we don't have mail delivery. So we all have to go to the mail have room to, to collect mail. our mail. So we see each other. So there are so many times when instead of just by yourself going to get your mail or putting your garbage can out, can out at the end of your driveway, you have to go someplace and you'll run into each other at these different places. I think that's important. We've heard that. that. Thank you. Yes, that is very neat. Center. Big, big yeah. meeting place, <laughs> yes. And also the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> that always helps. Yes. Well, thank you very much for being with us and make sure that you come right back for more 843 TV. Welcome back to 843 TV. We now have the pleasure to be joined by Mr. Edward Swift. Edward, how are you? Good, thanks. Good. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you found your way to Spring Island. Okay, so I was a sports writer was my career for over 30 years. I was at Sports Illustrated and my in-laws actually uh, bought down here. And so we're like a second generation because uh, we, we came and we'd visit them uh, a couple three times and just fell in love with the place and said we want our own lot down here so we we bought a lot and um, eventually uh, eventually built and now I'm retired and uh, spending more and more time that's great uh, love it how long have you been here well we the lot we bought in 2000 and um, we built the house in uh, 2003 my my wife wanted to um, our boys at that point were 
you know, younger, and she wanted to have the house. I was going like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> she wanted them to imprint on, on Spring Island before they got out of the house and had their own lives and whatnot. And uh, looking back on it, I'm glad that's, that's what we did. It was a little earlier timetable than I thought we were going to have. But um, uh, so we've now been here uh, 12 years and are still discovering things. Uh, we're, we just are, are as, as in love with Spring Island as, as we were the first time we saw it. And what do you all do while you're here? Well, uh, I tell friends of mine that this is like adult summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah, we've actually. said that before. In a good way. You know, a good I mean, analogy. You're not, you, you don't have to do any of this stuff, but, but we, uh, we tend to sign up for things. So uh, like you, Alice, I signed up this year to be a bluebird monitor. I play a lot of golf, uh, but uh, this is not a golf community. That would be the wrong way to characterize it, but they have an excellent golf course. Uh, I... I, I quail shoot just off island. We have a relationship with uh, a plantation, and which I know that Mike does. And um, I uh, fish, and w we, uh, my wife is is a big fisherman as am I. And uh, for redfish, for freshwater bass, uh, Spring Island is just bo both on the island and in the surrounding estuaries. Fabulous fishing. Um, uh, we're gardeners and so we use the community garden we enjoy that i am just going to pick up croquet you know, which <laughs> i know it sounds like for you know very old person's game but i'm told it's not and we have a, a first class croquet you know court here um, and uh, so the days you know they are easily filled and i still do a little work at home uh, so uh, uh, it's uh, the days fly by i have no no trouble filling the hours you know I'll, um I always love to hear about where people from here go on vacation. I mean, it's just the most fantastic vacations. I know, uh, I know, y'all go on some back roads vacations, and you just came back from one with another couple here, didn't you? Yeah, we we went with the Crossmans, who were early pioneers uh, here on the island, and raised their two kids here. They're, I think the only family to have done so. Um, but uh, Billy and Allison Crossman and we, we went to Patagonia fishing. Really? We were there 10 days uh -huh. and uh, had a great trip. And uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was something that I hope we'll do again. And, uh, I, but I, uh, I know that, that is, uh, it, that's the sort of friendships you do make on the island is uh, uh, people that you, you, you want to go places with and do other things with and not, not just stay here. And um, uh, th that, was a, that was the first time we vacationed with the Crossmans. And, we just had a ball, had a wonderful trip. Yeah, that's a wonderful way to go, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. So are you and your wife full-time residents now? Or? We're, we're not yet, no, uh, but we, we intend to uh, become in the next couple of years. I'm, as I said, I'm now retired. As a writer, you can live anywhere, and, and so there's no real reason for us not to spend more time here. I, uh, I still play a little hockey up north, and so that's the one thing you can't do down here is play hockey. And so uh, un until I officially retire my skates, hang them up, uh, I'll still be spending part of the winter up in Boston, which was a good winter to miss this year. I was getting ready to say, yeah. there's well, a good well reason times. to be here yeah, right yeah, now for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, so. Now, do your boys come back? They do. They come, they're both working now. They're both in Chicago, and so it's hard to you know, get them um, as often as we like, but they love it down here. They both love the golf course and they love to fish. And so uh, I think they're coming down for March. We had them here for Thanksgiving. And um, that's always a very busy time of year on the island because so many families do come right. down here. And the other time they like to come is New Year's. Uh, we have a big New Year's celebration actually at the Crossman's uh, uh, or they're, they're the hosts. And we go down to the gazebo at Bonnie Shore and set off fireworks, which is legal in South Carolina. And um, uh, that's, uh, that's another time they like to be. There are a lot of young people that are here around New Year's. That's a special time, isn't it? I mean, isn't that a tradition? It, it, yeah, it is. It has become so. I think we've done it about eight, nine years in a row. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've talked a lot about community every show, but especially this show. Um, and some people, when they ride through, they come across the bridge and they see all the greenery and everything. And you ride through the neighborhoods and you can't see the homes from the road. So some people may get the impression that that means people are secluded and, and not a part of the community. That's obviously not true. What can you say to that? I mean, Yeah, that, that, if that is a perception, it's an incorrect one. It's, this, is, 
the easiest place to meet people I've ever been. I mean, Boston is somewhat reserved. I would say quite reserved. Um, so when we came down here, it's just people do, they introduce themselves. Uh, there are your, their invitations for dinner. There's activities you sign up for. Look, you don't have to do any of this stuff, but if you're active and if you're uh, interested in meeting people, this is the easiest place in the world to do that because there are men's golf groups, um, there's women's golf groups, there's men's bridge, women's bridge. All these are, I'm in the chorus. <laughs> we have a little singing chorus. We need more men. Um, but that's, you know, these are uh, all welcoming groups and communities that uh, it's just easy to, to meet people. Yeah. And people don't want to hide in their houses. They're all beautiful houses. Mm -hmm. They, they want to get out. And, they, and so they, they take advantage of these, uh, uh, when the golf shop puts together a, couples twilight golf and dinner thing mm -hmm. people sign up yeah and so very very easy to meet people and to meet new people you're not you're not stuck with the same group mm -hmm. always new faces coming in oh, and and everybody's welcoming good well thank you for sharing your experiences with us we appreciate it my pleasure and stay with us we'll be back with more 843 tv Welcome back to 843 TV. We're here now with Mr. John Strother. He's the broker in charge here on Spring Island. So today we are in another beautiful home here on Spring Island, which I feel like I'm on repeat because we say that every time we do this, yeah. but it's really true. So our first home feature is going to be 114 Spring Island Drive. So tell everybody a little bit about this gorgeous house. Yeah, usually we're out, out in the community, you know, we're in places and things like that. So I thought it'd be nice to be inside of one because all these homes, you know, we always talk about how different they are. And they are all very unique. Yeah. We've been waiting for this. We've been wanting to see one this time. <laughs> I know. I thought <laughs> I'd give you a treat here, you know, and yeah, myself one too. A huge treat. Yeah. So this is a barn that, it was a barn in Ohio. Uh, the couple that owns this house brought it down here and they had um, Gullahue and Hall build um, Thomas and Denzinger designed it. That was an architectural firm that designed it. And then they had Gullhue and Hall build it. And they had Amish uh, workmen from Ohio build the cabinets. Everything in this house came from that barn. Everything in this house is specific to this house and to this site. Um, this is a 10 acre site. They put together two home sites. We have 400 acres on the marsh. The sunsets here are just spectacular. There's not a bad view in any room in this house. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I mean, it is amazing. No matter where you're at in this house, you have an amazing view of the marsh. Isn't it something else? It's and, breathtaking. It really is. Yeah. And every, um, uh, Barbara, the owner of the house, um, Lee and Barbara, uh, she, she thought out every detail here. Um, the cow behind us. Yeah, we love uh, the cow. I know. <laughs> That's Frida. And uh, she had, I think, eight of those painted, and she decided on F, A through, you know, G or whatever it was, Frida, because it's black, left-facing cow. I mean, that <laughs> detail. Specific. Yeah, and so there's a TV behind that, and that goes up. Um, just everything about this, the, the sink, the soap's home sink in the kitchen is carved from a solid, um, a solid boulder, um, custom hood, going up everything in here specific to their lives, an air-conditioned tack room, beautiful porches, Lee loves. Uh, and there's a porch off every room right in there, it seems like it's. Yeah, off the bedroom. Yes. Yeah, Lee sleeps on the porch a lot. I can see that, <laughs> yeah. I would too. <laughs> and the weather's nice, it works. Yeah, yes, and beautiful. they have a, an acre uh, corral out front because they both ride, and so they like to ride here and uh, put their horses up, come here for lunch, and then then go back more, you know, and then go to the stables. Not a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good day. It's kind of like Eddie said. It's, um, now, is there also a guest house, did you say, for this house? Yes. Um, you go over a ravine, um, and the guest house is made with the re uh, reclaimed so It has the again. same theme kind of mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty incredible. It's yeah. I mean, you can tell just looking through the kitchen and the walls. I mean, it's just everything's been done with such care. And, and no expense spared. You can tell it's very, very well done. Exactly, everything is specific to this house. And I had 25 realtors in here the other day and a lot of them came up to me and said, we've never been in a house this nice. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. When it's so warm and cozy yeah. and comfortable, it doesn't feel, a lot of times when you get all these windows and the big open ceilings, it feels cold and uncomfortable. And with all the wood and 
I love wood walls anyway. That's yeah. kind of my thing, but no, I love it. And it's four bed, four bath. Yes, four bedrooms, four baths. That's including the guest house. Uh, so the main house is only, um, I think, uh, like an office, one bedroom. Uh, I think there's a second bedroom and an attack mm -hmm. room. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not a big house, but it's probably one of the most comfortable houses yeah. uh, in the country. Yeah. yeah. So um, moving away from the home feature, how about the home sites? Um, I know you've got one that you want to talk about that's home site 330, 179 Spring Island Drive. Yeah, Tell us about that. that's so. on uh, Lower Goose Pond. Um, that's a really nice home site, and it's a great, um, it's a great story. Um, the people have owned that for quite some time, and they'll come down here visiting. Um, we featured a home uh, last month. Uh, there was a little red cottage. Mm -hmm. They bought that little cottage. So they're transitioning into, they want to stay here longer, and so they want to be there. And the people that own that cottage bought a bigger house on the marsh. <laughs> So Everybody does that happen a lot? Houses. That does. Can you move up? Yeah. The, the more you, time you want to spend here, I guess? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, people build cottages, then move up to full-time homes. There's a lot of fluid uh, movement within the community. People with bigger homes moving into smaller homes. Yeah. And um, so that's a wonderful site. Um, I think that's listed at $115,000. It's a trophy bass pond. I mean, we specifically manage that so that you're going to catch a, a real big bass nice. out there. Yeah, it really is mm -hmm. if you're a bass fisherman. It's a fisherman's yeah. dream. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Walk out in your backyard and catch a turkey bass. That's yeah. not a bad deal. Yeah. Well, earlier we saw a little bit of construction going on at Walker's Landing. Yes. Well, we're doing two things down there. We're um, in one of them. We'll talk about uh, the other maybe next month. But uh, we have a summer house down there, which was a screen pavilion. It's right on the river and we'd have it for special functions during the summertime. Um, so it was kind of limited in so when we could use it. Uh, in the art barn, we were having our trust talks, and our trust talks have gotten to the point where we have so many people that come, it was getting That's too great. small. That's great, problem to have. Out. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. And they have talks every Thursday night. Um, there's wine and hors d'oeuvres, and they, everybody listens uh, to people about the ecology, um, uh, maybe nature, uh, health, uh, you know, whatever current events, foreign affairs, and then they go down to the river house and dine. You know, from that they order at that time. So uh, we're enclosing the river house or the uh, the summer house uh, down at Walker Landing, and um, we're going to be able to seat 150 people in there now. So and have special events year round. So we'll be there on the river, you know, beautiful views and uh, just a wonderful place to. Um, That's a really neat location. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, it is. It really is. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We've had a blast again here, just meeting so many great people and hearing about some great opportunities to move here. Yeah. Um, so if anybody is interested, what do they do? They just call the, the office or get on the website. What do you recommend? Yeah, go to the website, springisland.com, or call 843-987-2200, and uh, we'll be happy to help out with anything. All right, thanks for your time today. Yeah. And thank you for watching 843 TV. Where communities come to speak.